Jonathan. And like, can we just talk about how criminally undercompensated the back end of when you compare it? Like, I would say that you guys are doing three times the labor of a mainstream yeah. employee. Not sure. that there's anything wrong with mainstream, but it's simply the fact that you have to know everything. Like in mainstream, there is there's literally like, you know, oh, these are electrics C stands. Like mm-hmm. these are their stands. You can't touch them. Mm-hmm. You grip over here. Like mm-hmm. this is not your department. Like yeah. you can't even touch this this stick that yes. I'm holding. Like this is not yours. Yes. Um in porn, everybody does everything. It's yes. collaborative. Like it's 100 um, percent you are lighting, you are stills, you are audio, you are production management, you are craft services, you, you are, are PA. Everything. And you're you're doing that for 30% of what one person who just has one departmental job is doing. And like we were talking about this yesterday of it's such a I think it's such a like if there's one thing I think in porn that is applicable to the wider world of like gig economy work. It's that if you are consistently undervaluing your work Mm -hmm you're you're setting that standard and yeah. there's always somebody that's willing to do your job for less yep but people like i don't know the the quality aspect of this like i care about yeah what i make i want it to look as cinematic as possible as right. beautiful as possible i want it to be as sexy as possible and i spend a lot of time and effort doing that and then i look at the end of the day at like how much money the crew and production are actually walking with and i'm just like why are we doing this to ourselves? Why? Like, the skill set that we have, like, we really all must be just, we just must fucking love this job at the end of the day. Like, that has to be it. Like, there's there's nothing quite like this informal creative environment that we have, but the the struggles that that the crew undergoes and the constant law changes Mm -hmm. and the legal dimension to this like you guys have no clue how much battle goes into just being able to supply a steady diet of like ethically made porn yeah oh my god the wider world it's it's so difficult and it's like i like i would love to go into detail about it but i also don't want to call myself out on some stuff because it's just like but sometimes i do feel like i get punished because I want to do everything by the books and I want to do everything properly and I want to Which costs more. run a business the way you're supposed to run a business and it 100% costs so much more money when there are other people who just kind of skate around certain things and, and you know, I can understand how a lot of companies might go with, oh, this person's pitching us like $1,000 less. Like, why do we care if this person is perhaps exposing himself to certain risks on, you know, whatever level? Because oh, yeah. they're signing a contract. All of those, like, they're public signing, Miami shoots and shit like They're that. signing a work for hire contract where they are admitting, they are taking on full responsibility and all liability for mm-hmm. anything that happens on set. So, like, we don't care. You and, know what I mean? It's no yeah. skin off our back. Yeah. So well, and and like good luck. Say okay, so like you're a company that assumes all of this liability. Like you're a production company that says, yeah. okay, sure, to whomever, I will sell you this scene that I'm making according to your specs, um, and I'm creating it this way. If anything happens, though, the the normal protections that a contractor would have: liability insurance, workman's comp, mm-hmm. um, the the typical dice insurance is right, like trying to get them to work with adult because of the stigma that we have. Oh, and yeah. then like you throw in the the real legal dimensions to that, like the payment processing, like banks and and um at a at a federal level, banks and payment institutions have been disincentivized in in very real economic ways from working with adult because we're grouped in with the same group of people as like drug dealers and yeah. human traffickers and yeah. like all of these things. And so putting a choke on our financing is considered a way of running porn out of civilized society. But all it does is force us underground. All it does is in a really real way make our sets more dangerous 
for crew and for talent. Because I don't think – if that's one thing, I, I think, like, the last time that I was on your podcast, I really, really heavily stressed how important it is that talent be protected mm-hmm. um, from a work safety perspective, from a mental health perspective and all of that. But, like, crew have just as many – of the same problems they are just as open to being taken advantage of albeit in very different ways Mm -hmm. like the the types of advantage that's taken of is really from these more predatory company practices Mm -hmm. like and do i necessarily think that these uh corporations are sitting like these most of them are foreign entities that have never really stepped foot onto a porn set and Mm -hmm. i don't necessarily think that they're like sitting up in their offices going like oh how can we how can we fuck over these Yeah, yeah, yeah these little men down here that are making our stuff um I think it's really just that that like invisible hand of the market that right. just moves towards whoever can get it done the cheapest, the fastest, right. the whatever. And I mean, it's all about capitalism. Yeah. And if you can get the same product or a similar enough product for less money, why wouldn't you do that? How, you know, that's how you become a successful business in the first place, right? You don't just throw money at people because you like want them to be happy. Right. That's not like what makes a good business person, which is why I'm so shitty at it. Dude, same. (laughs) I'm constantly overpaying. Like I make honest, in all honesty, I make like barely any money on my features because I always wind up like overpaying my crew. Cause yeah. I'm just like, I'm putting you through so much yeah. to get this product. I done. always go over food budget. Cause Same. I'm like, it's been a really long day. Like, of course we're going to get you guys pizza and coffee. Like, I'm, yeah. you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that's only fair. And, and like kill fees, if things happen, like I'm always like yeah. the one doing the kill fees and stuff yeah. like that. Like I'm just too uh, tender hearted on all of that stuff. But like, I don't know. It's just, it's so crazy to me, too, because porn is changing so much in the last, like, since I got in mm-hmm. almost four years ago. It's become, like, my joke is that porn is no longer punk rock. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is true. Everybody and their mama has a Snapchat or an OnlyFans yep. now. Like, literally everybody. Like, there's there's mainstream celebrities now that have their own, like, little premiums mm-hmm. of various sorts. It, that's fascinating to me. But then on top of it, you know, looking at it now with a little bit of a back end eye, all I see is how much subscription and DVD sales and all of the traditional metrics of like how traditional porn has made money mm-hmm. is all diving. Like you yeah. can look back on these websites, like you can go to any of like the big sites and they've got those view counters on them. And you can see that like even just three, four or five years ago, it'd be like, oh, you know, 22,000 views on this video. I'm like, okay, well, 22,000 views on a video with subscribers, like you're looking at, you know, what that represents for what your subscribership was if you had 22,000 mm-hmm. people looking at it. And then now it's like, 3,000, mm-hmm. 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 yeah. views. And then you think about, well, like, how many of those were the guys that bought, like, lifetime memberships for mm-hmm. those bargain deals? Yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Like, you're not even probably netting a, a recurring income off right. of a huge portion of these just, like, lifers that are right. watching. So where are those people going to consume their pornography? Because it's not that anybody stopped beating off. Yeah, that's for sure. Nobody stopped beating off in no. this time span. Yeah. It's they've switched to the Patreons. They've mm-hmm. switched to the OnlyFans. They've switched to Snapchat. And I think my big curiosity is I, I, everything changes. Like nothing will stay the same. Mm-hmm. But like what does that mean? I think it means, um, I think that especially now in the place that we are at and how disassociated we are from each other because of the, you know, advent of the internet and the proliferation of social media is that people are seeking connection, like a personal connection. You do not feel connected to people when you join a big, you know, Mm multi-pass website and you see all these professionally shot scenes on your favorite girls. You do not feel connected to them when you join their Snapchat And they're like, you know, taking pictures of themselves in the bubble bath when they're in the car and they're like, hey, guys, on my way to set streaming like that. And they're responding to your DMs. That is a personal connection that you are not getting on those other sites. And I think that we are becoming an increasingly more and more lonely culture. Absolutely. And I think that that's 
that's that's what it is. That's also why camming is such a big thing too. I think that's a really astute observation because like the same things that you and I have just been complaining about for the last two days yeah. straight with regards to <laughs> we literally have been. Yeah, we had a big we had a like like I Hol- love getting together with other directors because all we do is complain. Holly like, it's is just a like- one big bitch fest. <laughs> I love hanging out with you, Holly, because, like, every time that I do, like, not that you are in any way, like, old enough to be a mom, but, like, you've been doing this so long. Like, you, there, you have, like, a big maternal presence, and I'm just like, oh, my God, this is normal. I'm feeling normal yeah. things. I know. I remember oh. when you hit me up and you were, like, struggling to find a location, and I was like, girl, I feel your pain. You're like, this happens to you, too. I'm like, you have no idea. <gasps> That is so. That meant so much to me that you took the time out of your day just to like do a little emotional labor for like a relative stranger. I was like, oh my god, thank you. Thanks just for being a a shoulder.